Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. In this video, I want to tell you about the Axis that I have been making now for the last three years. If you want to have a campfire in your campsite, or if you want to cook your food over a wood fire, then you're going to need a camp axe. And if you have a camp axe, you're going to need a sheath for it to protect yourself from accidentally getting cut, to protect the sharp edge from accidentally getting nicked, and to protect your other equipment from accidentally getting cut. But many camp axes are bought without a good sheath. For example, I think that old Collins, Craftsman, and Plum axes that you can find in flea markets and antique stores make great camp axes, but they never come with a sheath. This Council Tools 2-pound camp axe was available in stores until recently, but it did not come with a sheath, and many other New axes sold in stores do not come with sheaths. I really like this steel Rhineland pattern axe, but it only comes with a little rubber edge protector that won't last very long at all. Many people like this Fiskars X7 as a camp axe, but it comes with this big bulky plastic sheath that doesn't pack very well at all. Estwing axes have always come with a fairly nice sheath. This is the older leather sheath, and this is the newer Cordura nylon sheath. To remove the axe from the sheath, you have to push the handle through a hole in the bottom of the sheath, and to replace the sheath, you have to push that handle back through the hole again. But it's a tight fit, and so each time you remove the sheath or replace the sheath, you risk the possibility of accidentally cutting yourself when you're trying to shove that handle through the hole. This Hart 20-ounce hatchet that is sold by Home Depot stores has a similar type of sheath, but it's much easier to get the handle through the bottom hole. Since so many axes that I liked came without a sheath, I began making my own leather sheaths about three years ago. Over those three years, I have now made about 50 sheaths, and each one is different from the previous ones. But... They can be classified into three groups or generations. The first generation sheaths covered most of the axe head at the top and covered a large part of the eye. And they had a short one half inch wide strap that wrapped under the pole. Most were made with dark leather and had Chicago screws to secure the edge. Toward the end of this generation, I started using rivets instead of the Chicago screws, and I started shortening the top of the sheath so that the strap was a little bit longer. Here are a couple more examples of late first-generation sheaths. Second-generation sheaths were cut shorter so that the top did not cover any of the eye and the one half inch strap was lowered so that it wrapped around the back of the handle rather than just under the pole. The reason I decided to stop covering the eye is because the amount of the handle that extended above the axe head would alter the fit of the sheath. For example, a sheath that fit one axe head may not fit an identical axe head if the handle was installed slightly differently. 
Most of these second-generation sheaths were made from lighter color leather, and the rivets were spaced about one inch apart. And I began stamping these sheaths with my initials FMD. The third generation is characterized by a rectangular-looking sheath that covers the edge and the lower cheek of the axe, but does not cover the eye, and it has a strap that is approximately one and a half inches wide that wraps either under the axe or across the top of the axe. Most of them are made from light leather with rivets that are spaced approximately one inch apart, and my initials are stamped on the strap. I still have some of the darker leather available if anybody would prefer that color. This is my first third generation sheath. It was made with two pieces of leather that were riveted together and the strap was a part of the back piece. Here are two more early third generation efforts. The first one is shown on a half hatchet and the second one is shown on a tomahawk. But I quickly settled on this design where the main part of the sheath is made from large, one large piece of leather that's folded over the top and then a strap is riveted to the back of the sheath and wraps under the axe to snap on the front. This photo shows the most recent sheath that I made on an S-Wing Camper's Axe 14. This photo of the back side shows how the strap is riveted to the back of the sheath. And I might add that this sheath, like all of my other sheaths, has a leather welt that protects the edge of the axe from accidental damage. Let me show you the process of removing this sheath and putting it back on. The first thing that I want to do is just unsnap the snap. Then I'm going to hold the upper part of the sheath with my first and second finger. I'm going to grab the strap with my thumb and fourth finger and hold it back out of the way and slide the axe out. Now to put the axe back in, I do the same thing. I hold the upper part with my first two fingers. I hold the strap with out of the way with my thumb and fourth finger. Make sure it's in there snugly. And there it is. Well, I hope this video has been helpful. And I hope that you'll think about maybe adding a sheath to your axe if you don't already have one. Here are some common axes that are used by campers. If you own one of these, I can very easily make a sheath using my own axe as a model and then ship it to you for $8 uh, U.S. Postal Service rate. If you own a different type of axe that I don't own, you'll have to ship the axe to me and then pay for the shipping to ship it back with a sheath after I'm finished. As I mentioned in the video, I would be happy to make one for you for $30 plus all of the shipping fees. For more information about Camp Axes, please visit my recently renamed website, moderntentcamping.com. And especially check out my new Modern Tent Camping store page. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money, go tent camping.